My name is Andrea Miller and I'm a registered dietitian and certified diabetes educator here at Community Hospitals and Wellness Centers in Bryan. And today I have Jan David with me and she is Vice President of Patient Care here at the hospital. Um, so we're happy to have her here with us today for Live It Easy as Pie. And I've heard around the hospital that Jan is just the perfect fit for today because she is sweet as pie. <laughs> so that's what the buzz is around the hospital today. So I'm really excited today to show you how to make some healthier versions of pie. I, uh, I love pie. Pie is one of my favorite things. I have very fond memories growing up um, making pie. Um, Probably one of the first memories of cooking that I have is making pie with my mom. My mom, you know, has always been into pie. Um, I'm going to show you how to do a, um, a sweet and a savory pie today. So the savory would be a quiche and the sweet. Um, we're doing tart cherries, which also kind of strike a chord for me. Um, tart cherries are probably one of my favorite foods um, growing up as well. We had a tart cherry tree in our yard at home. so. Um, tart cherry pie is probably one of my favorite pies and actually since you all know that um, my anniversary is this month um, I married my high school sweetheart um, for those of you that didn't know um, I started dating him when I was 14 years old <laughs> <laughs> and um, cherry pie was one of the first desserts that I ever made for my husband so and I would make a two crust cherry pie and I would like cut a heart into the crust. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so um, on our anniversary, um, in any special occasion, Valentine's Day, I always make him tart cherry pies. So. Um, so anyways, we are going to go ahead and get started on our two recipes. We're going to start with making the filling. Um, so the first step, I'm going to get Jan going right away, <coughs> cooking. Uh -oh. Getting the heat going. Okay. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to start um, cooking down our tart cherry. So I'm actually using frozen tart cherries today. Now when I was a kid, cherry tree in the backyard, my mom would make me sit there after picking the cherries with a bowl full of cherries with a clean bobby pin, like actually scooping out the pit. Like that was my entertainment when I was <laughs> a, a young child, pitting cherries yeah. by hand manually. Um, so anyways, you can just take the two cups of frozen tart cherries and put those into our pot. And that's it for right now, so good job. <laughs> I passed, right? <laughs> you passed. Um, but anyways, we got these from Chief. You can buy frozen tart cherries at Chief, already pitted, so no bobby pins or cherry pitters. They're already pitted for you. Um, the brand that they have here at Chief, it comes in a two and a half pound bag, and they're actually grown in Michigan, so something local mm -hmm. there. Um, the next thing we're going to do is get started on our savory quiche. So we're just going to keep an eye on our cherries. Um, if you want to just give them a stir on occasion, mm -hmm. um, the juice, well, first of all, they were frozen, so they're kind of a little bit frozen still. As the heat um, starts to warm them, some of the juice is going to come out of them. Um, to help us make our filling. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to put a little bit of olive oil in another pan. Um, I think in the recipe, I actually, when you're looking at the recipe, it says olive oil. And when you're looking at the instructions, it actually refers to butter. I think I changed it at the last minute. It was butter and I changed it to olive oil. You could really use either one. So whatever you prefer, olive oil is obviously going to be a little bit healthier. Okay, so I'll, um, I'm going to wait on the heat on that for a second because I'm going to get our vegetables going. So Jan, I'm going to give you another little task right here, and okay. I'm just going to give you three, and there's no knives involved. Oh, good. I don't <laughs> so want any knives. So the asparagus. Um, so asparagus is a spring vegetable, and um, for anybody that's interested in like low preservative types of foods or organics, 
Um, asparagus is one vegetable that you really don't need to buy organic um, if you are interested in that because it's um, on the clean 15 list. Um, it grows very quickly. Um, you're actually eating the um, a sprout of the plant. So, you know, if you've ever grown asparagus or seen it grown, um, like you see the, the bud coming out of the ground and then within a day it looks like this and you're ready to harvest it. So there's no need for a lot of pesticides mm -hmm. in growing asparagus. So anyways, the um, end is kind of woody. So if you just hold it right at the end here and um, break it downwards, it'll naturally snap where it becomes tender. So I'll let you do your three asparagus. This saved me so much time when I figured out how to do this in the kitchen. Um, also, asparagus is um, very perishable. It goes bad quickly, so when you buy it, try to use it up within about 48 hours from when you purchase it. So we need about a cup and a half of asparagus, so I'm just gonna start here and um, slice it up pretty thin. Careful not to, actually those ends are a little bit tough, so I'm just gonna Discard those, and I'll steal your mm -hmm. three stalks. So a cup and a half is about, one down, <laughs> a cup and a half is about um, half of a bunch of asparagus. This quiche, um, something that I like about it, you can make, you can double the recipe, make two quiches and freeze one. So if you're doing the work, you might as well make an extra, um, extra quiche and throw it in the freezer so then on a busy night you have a meal ready to go. So this is, it looks like about a cup and a half. I'm just gonna go ahead and throw it all in. So what are some of your favorite things to cook in the kitchen, Jan? I do simple things. I don't do complicated things, so. <laughs> well, hopefully by the end of today you'll find that these are simple. Oh, okay. That's the goal, right? <laughs> So who knows what this is? Any guesses from our audience? Who's brave enough to talk? <laughs> yep, in the front row. Billy Club. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> I've never heard that before. <laughs> do you care to elaborate why it's called a Billy Club? It could do damage. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> anyways, it's called a leek, and it's a member of the onion family, and Jan said she's never had a leek. Has anybody in the room ever had a leek? A couple people. Not very many. I think two. Two hands that I'm counting who have had leeks. And that's what I like about Livet. I like showing you new ingredients that might have some familiar taste and showing you how to use them in case you encounter them, they're on sale, you're interested in a new vegetable to try to use. Um, so what you do with it, um, and actually there's a little bit cut off the top here. When you buy it, it's gonna look, it's gonna have more green on the top of it and it's gonna have some roots at the bottom. When you grow asparagus, you have to grow it in a trench and then as it gets bigger, you start piling um, the dirt kind of on top of it and around it so dirt can get like inside the little leaves here. Um, so when you're using um, leek, you wanna cut off the roots. And actually, a lot of the green part has been cut off for me, so um, I'm not even gonna trim. I might actually just tear a little bit or cut a little bit off here, some of the tougher ends. And then I'm gonna cut it right down the middle. And um, it'll kind of, when I cut it or slice it, it's gonna look like little half moons. How's our cherries doing there? They're doing. Okay, yeah, so they look great. Um, so if you can see, um, a lot of the liquid has come out of the cherries. So I'm gonna pause for my leek. I will get back to my leeks. Um, but we're gonna add our thickening agent and our sugar to mm -hmm. our cherries right now. Um, so that would be, so we'll do the sugar first. Okay. And I'll have you, we can add it at the same time. Okay. How's that? Mm -hmm. So we have sugar and cornstarch. Oops. Okay. Sugar's kind of settled into the bottom here. And actually, let's stop with, we'll just, oh, okay. um, yeah, that's, that looks like plenty of cornstarch. So it's actually, I think, a, a um, tablespoon and a half of um, 
cornstarch and a quarter cup of sugar. So that's not a ton of sugar for, um, for a pie filling. So um, it's a little bit tart, but I, that's how I prefer it. So um, yeah, and I'll just have Jan mix it in there and then it's just gonna kind of continue cooking. So I'll have her keep stirring. Um, so back to leeks. So again, I cut it open and um, I'm actually, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slice it thin and kind of make some half moons here. Okay, so like as you, I don't know if you can see this, but like they're kind of, like they kind of fall apart when you cut them and they look like little half moons. Um, so they, they taste kind of like onions, but they have a more mild flavor. I like them. They also go really well in soups, like a, um, a potato soup or a bean soup. Or really any type of soup it would go really well in. Because when you buy them at the store, you might get um, like a big bunch. So if you're trying to figure out what on earth you're gonna do with the rest of them, um, soups would be great, or any type of stir fry or casserole, anywhere you would put onions. And if you don't want to buy leeks for this recipe, you could also substitute an onion, just a plain old onion. So, I need about a cup, that looks like about a cup to me. So I'm actually going to put it, I'm putting it into a colander, because like I said, dirt can kind of get trapped in between all of those leaves in there. And I have some water. And at home, you can just run it under the sink. Or some people prefer to um, rinse the, the sections like before you cut it. Whatever works for you. So I'm just going to pour some water over my leeks just to kind of clean them out. And I actually, don't laugh at me. <laughs> this lid is on here really well. <laughs> Well, we'll just keep pouring. It's a little bit better. So hopefully that'll rinse out some of the dirt, or all of the dirt, really. And I'm just kind of shaking it around. So nutrition-wise, leeks, again, a lot of the same um, health benefits as onions. Healthy for your heart, good antioxidants. Just something different. I think it's good to use a variety of different foods in your diet because they all have different nutrient properties. So that looks good. I'm just gonna dump that into my skillet. Move my water out of the way. I got my other stuff here. Okay, so then we can turn on our heat. How's our cherries? Doing How good. They yeah, they're need doing a little good. more. So all of our corn starch has dissolved, and it looks like the sugar has dissolved. And um, I'm gonna I'm mm -hmm. gonna show a little bit. Mm -hmm. It looks like it looks kind of milky, like it looks kind of creamy and milky. That's the corn starch. But as the corn starch starts to thicken, um, that's going to turn clear. Now you could also use flour as a thickener. And flour tends to um, stay more of a milky color. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. doing a great job. I think I'm actually going to turn the heat up just a little bit. Okay. So we're cooking it until it starts to thicken. Okay, so getting some heat on our asparagus and leeks. So that's the filling for our quiche along with eggs, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, and then this is the filling for our rustic cherry pie. So I'm gonna have Jan keep an eye. I'm giving her a lot of work to do today. <laughs> She's gonna start to keep an eye on both of these, and I'll keep an eye on it a little bit okay. too. We're cooking the asparagus for about six to eight minutes until it just softens because um, it won't cook that much in the quiche. So we wanna make sure that it's, um, tender before we actually put it in the quiche. This is really thickening. Okay, it thickened yeah. up fast. Yes. Okay, okay. good. See, look how awesome she's doing. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> See, I would have missed that. <laughs> that looks great. So I turned off the heat. Once it's thick, you can turn off the heat. And we are going to do our last step. I have some almond extract. Um, and it's pretty, cl it's clear. It looks kind of mm -hmm. like water in that bowl. Put it in. Yep. And it's about an eighth of a teaspoon. You don't need a lot of almond extract um, because it really, a little goes a long way. Um, but the um, combination of almond and cherry go really well together. Um, in fact, if you're looking for ways to use your extra cherries, um, if you do go buy a big bag of cherries from like Chief, um, again, it's a two and a half pound bag, so it's quite a bit of um, cherries. I like to throw them in my oatmeal in the morning. Oh, yeah. I'll okay. make a, because I love cherry pie so much, I'll make my cherry pie oatmeal. So I'll take like a half a cup of tart cherries and I'll put my oatmeal on top of that. Just a touch of brown sugar, um, cover it with water, pop it in the microwave for a couple minutes. And um, I usually put chia seeds in there. You all know how much I love chia seeds at this point. And um, it's delicious. I usually top it with some vanilla yogurt. Um, another, is that all? Yeah. Fine. It's, okay. Um, another good use for tart cherries, for those of you that have kids, um, tart cherries were always one of my kids' first finger foods. I would buy them frozen and I just cut them in half and thaw them out in the microwave and they love to pick up the tart cherries. Mm -hmm. um, kids and babies particularly, for some reason, really like tart foods. At least that's what I've read and mine did. So. Um, plus highly nutritious. I haven't talked a lot about the nutrition benefits of tart cherries but they're um, a powerful antioxidant. Um, there's some research that shows that tart cherries can um, decrease inflammation, or actually inflammation is a big one, decreasing mm -hmm. inflammation and um, research with delayed onset muscle soreness. So for athletes drinking tart cherry juice, um, there's some evidence that that can um, prevent them from feeling sore the next day. Something I learned also, tart cherries are one of the only natural sources of melatonin. At least that's what I read, which I never knew before, but it's supposed to um, aid in healthy sleep, so. Mm, that's interesting. So I'm gonna, these look tender to me. I'm gonna turn them off. So now that um, all of our filling is cooked, we can get started on our pie crust. So I'll give Jan a break from the, the heat. All these are off. Good to go on our pies. And you can just go ahead and leave that in there if you'd like. Or on the side. That's fine, too. Okay. Um, make sure everything is all cleaned up here. So one of the reasons a lot of people don't like pie or choose not to eat pie, it's not exactly um, one of the world's healthiest foods. And a lot of it comes in, well, the sugar that's in the, or in the pie filling. Mm -hmm. And then also the crust isn't tradi a traditional healthy food. So I'm going to make it a little bit healthier today. Um, and we're actually going to make an oil pie crust. We have a pastry chef that works here in catering. And um, I asked her, were you cringing when I told you we were making an oil pastry crust? Because a lot of, I feel a lot of pastry chefs would cringe at that because traditionally it's made with like lard or shortening or, you know, unhealthy types of fat. So we are using oil today, and I'm choosing to use canola oil because it has a mild flavor, but you could use a lot of different types of oil. For a savory pie, I think olive oil would be fine, um, but for a sweet pie, that might the flavors might mm -hmm. not mesh well. Um, for a sweet pie, um, you know, coconut oil I think would go really well. Um, and then any other type of vegetable oil could be used. So a lot of flexibility here in what type of oil you use. So anyways, um, the other thing that I'm doing, it, and this is, again, I think a lot of page, pastry chefs would cringe a little bit, but, um, and it does take a little bit of getting used to the flavor. It is a little bit different. It's not your traditional flaky pie crust. Um, and sometimes adding whole wheat flour, which is the, the <laughs> health benefit that I'm getting towards, um, tends to make things a little bit more tough, um, but eating whole grains is uh, a benefit to health. So we are making a half whole grain pie crust. We are using some all-purpose flour. If that's too much for you, feel free to go ahead and use all all-purpose flour. Um, so anyways, I am reaching for my measuring cups. I'm using 
a cup and a quarter of, grab a spoon, of whole wheat flour. Making a mess here too. They're small bowls of flour. And as you can see, I'm uh, like leveling off with a, a um, butter knife. And then one cup of all-purpose flour. You want to be pretty accurate with your measurements here. Um, you know, I guess if you get a crust that's a little too dry, just add more milk. Um, if you get a crust that is too um, moist or oily, add uh, a little more flour. Mm -hmm. So, makes, makes sense. sense, right? Mm -hmm. Now, Jan has my salt down there. See, it's in the small bowl, yep. And we are gonna add a little bit of salt. I forget what I put in my recipe. I think I put a half of a teaspoon. And that is cut back from the original recipe. I think there was a, a full teaspoon in the original recipe. So. Is it a, a quarter, does someone say? Okay. So I'm mixing the dry ingredients together. Then I can have Jan help me. Okay. So I'm gonna give you the liquid measuring cup. Okay. And I'm not. Good thing I saved some water. <laughs> oh no, you can use water. Um, actually, growing up, my mom would use water in her oil pie crust, um, but I'm using um, skim milk, cold skim milk. So I'll let you dump. Actually, why don't we measure out the milk first? We need a half a cup, and that's kind of a hard, so it'd be. The second. Yeah, that was a little, so up to the okay. second one. Okay. And then you can dump the oil on in there. So for some reason, and I'm not exactly sure why, the recipe um, tells you to combine your milk and oil in the same measuring cup and to add them all at once to the pie crust. So that seems reasonable. <laughs> so I do. I'm sure it would turn out just fine if you didn't. So I'm just kind of incorporating the flours and the salt and being messy. The oil goes right in here. Yep, the oil goes right on top. A lot of people also don't make pies because they have the mindset that making pies is difficult. But I'm going to show you it can be easy. <laughs> Hence the name, easy as pie. Okay, so if you want to go ahead and just add um, the oil and milk right on top. You really could use any type of milk you wanted. Like I said, my mom uses water. So, and I would, I would guess that like if you wanted to use like an unsweetened almond milk or soy milk, or something like that, that would be just fine in here too. So whatever your dietary needs are, you can adjust. So I'm just mixing it together. This is the fun part, once we get the dough mixed together. You have your rolling pin down there. I do. And some wax paper. So I'm gonna show you a trick. A lot of people would flour their surface and try to roll it out and then somehow transfer it to a pie plate. I'm gonna show you a trick here and a couple different approaches to my trick to an easy pie crust. So that was pretty easy, just a couple ingredients for a pie crust, most of which I always have in my mm -hmm. pantry. Now you might not be a whole wheat flour person yet, but if you hang around me long <laughs> enough, you will be. <laughs> I substitute it almost all the time for all-purpose flour. And, <laughs> oh, my family's used to it now. Yeah. So. <laughs> okay, so then once you have the dough all mixed together, you form it into two balls. This will make a, um, a two-crust pie, or like we're using it, we're doing two pies that are one crust. And Jan's gonna get to roll out her own crust here, so oh boy. We'll, we'll see her skills <laughs> on. Uh, don't watch too closely. 
You want to make sure they're about the same. I always have to like hold one in each hand to make sure that they're the same size. And it doesn't have to be exact, but good enough. Okay. There's your ball of dough. So I have, she laid one piece of wax paper down and she's gonna put the other piece right on top of it. And she actually did a good job. I didn't even tell her there. You, do you make pies at home? No, I no. do okay. not make pies. <laughs> She kind of already <laughs> flattened it into a little disc, sort of. And it doesn't have to be a perfect disc, but she flattened it out a little bit. That was good. I brought my own special equipment today. I actually bought, brought my grandma's rolling pin. So one of the few things that I have for my grandmother that I use all the time. I have some silicone baking mats. So. Another thing that I've been into late is sustainability. <laughs> so these are reusable. You can wash them over and over again. So, um, so I'm going to put mine on top of a silicone baking mat. Put another one right on top and kind of flatten it out. Just do mine an is moving. There. <laughs> <laughs> I can just do the best you can. I'll help you if you need it. So oh the goal here, moving. and I kind of um, turn my rolling pin in all different directions. You want to circle, ideally. Um, and actually, we can use yours for the rustic pie crust, so don't worry if it's not perfect. Okay. You know, the idea here, it doesn't have to be perfect. You know, you don't have to make a perfect bakery pie. Um, it's still going to taste good, and your family will probably still eat it if it's, you know, a little funny looking. <laughs> not saying that yours is going to be funny looking. <laughs> <laughs> it probably will be. <laughs> I mean, mine are probably funny looking too, so. <laughs> so it takes a little bit of work. You want about, I guess it depends on the size of your pie, but anywhere from nine inches in diameter to 11. So a lot of times people would just buy um, like pre-rolled pie dough in the refrigerated section. I've never done that myself. Um, but, you know, personally, I like, um, I like being in charge of the ingredients. That's why I prefer to do it homemade. Okay. How's yours doing over there? Oh, it's coming. <laughs> You're doing great. <laughs> okay, so I think mine um, looks pretty good. I'm going to peel off this top one. Actually, I'm going to make it a little bit thinner. It takes a little bit of strength. So that's a workout, you know, workout <laughs> for the day, make pie, burn calories, eat pie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, you know, as you can see, mine's not a perfect circle. Um, it has some rough edges, but that's about the size you're looking for. Some of it is hanging over the, the mat and some will hang over the, um, the wax paper, but that's okay. And now, um, so I'm going to get started on our, um, our quiche and I'm going to um, mold my dough into the pie plate. So my pie plate is actually down there, Jan, I'll have you hand me mm -hmm. my pie plate. Mm -hmm. And that, that's looking really good. Maybe um, roll this way just a tiny bit. Okay. And then I think that's perfect. Looks okay. good. All right. So that one we're going to use um, for our rustic cherry pie. Okay. okay, so my pie plate here. So I just pick up the whole thing and I'm just going to kind of turn that out onto the pie plate. And then you just peel off your other mat. And we'll get to yours in a second. I have a different plan for that one. Okay. And just, you kind of have to be careful with this part. Okay. And if it's not, you know, perfectly centered, that's all right. Just kind of do the best you can to reposition it. But again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Now, since this is a one crust pie, we can go ahead and, um, and finish off the edges. Need a little bit more on this side. You know what? I'm going to steal. I'll, tell, I'll show you a trick. And again, it's not perfect. 
but um, our pastry chef is probably like covering her eyes. <laughs> that looks awful. <laughs> and you used whole wheat flour and oil in your pie crust. Those are probably like sins in the pastry chef world. <laughs> but not in the dietitian world. So I'm going to steal from one side that has more, and I'm just going to kind of press it over on the other side. And then any um, spots where you have extra dough, you can just kind of trim them off. And then I'm just going to kind of flute the edges of the pie to make it look pretty, or somewhat pretty. <laughs> I guarantee it's going to taste the same regardless of whether your edges are perfect or not. You could also take a fork. I have some forks here, actually. We'll do a multi-edge and just kind of you know, run your fork around it. So that's another option. Never had to uh, make a pie in front of an audience <laughs> before. <laughs> okay, so there's my not quite so perfect, <laughs> but good enough <laughs> yes. pie good. crust. So now we're going to get started on our filling for this one. Um, we'll, yeah, we'll get to that in just a okay. second. We'll do right. our filling for this pie first. So okay. I'm gonna have you hand me the shredded cheese. Mm -hmm. And actually, I'll, why don't I let you do it? We'll just put it right on. There we go. I'll hold it up. So we have our, um, our cheese. And I'm putting it on the bottom. And that can help a little bit. A lot of times people would put cheese on the top to kind of decorate it. I like it on the bottom because it acts as a barrier between the liquid and the crust. So the crust um, isn't going to get quite so soggy. And then we're going to pour our, this is actually a pretty heavy pot here. And it's cooled by now, so a little bit anyways. Our asparagus and our leeks right on top of the cheese. And then we have to do our egg mixture. So a quiche usually has eggs. I'm not going to say always, but I've never seen an eggless quiche. Um, so we are going to use six eggs. And I, um, I'm going to, actually, let's just move. Get this out of the way. So Jan start to crack some eggs into a bowl there. And if you want some help cracking eggs, let me know. doing that, I'm going to um, use our um, milk. So the quiche mixture is a mixture of eggs and a dairy product. And we are using whole milk. Gasp! I'm using whole milk in a recipe. Um, it's actually an improvement in um, the nutrition for this recipe because the original recipe used heavy cream. So um, we're cutting back a little bit and we are using whole milk instead. You could probably you know, get away with 2% um, or 1%. The issue that we had um, when we used skim, it was kind of runny. Um, I'm not sure if that was due to the quantity or you know, the lack of fat. So um, in this recipe, awesome, we, have, um, we need 3 quarters of a cup. So I'm not sure if this is 3 quarters of a cup, so I'm just going to measure it out. And I'll have Jan, if you want to start whisking that. I'm going to add a pinch of nutmeg. So I know some people don't like that measurement, a pinch. It's not exact, but you don't want very much of it. Nutmeg's very strong. Um, usually we use nutmeg in um, sweet dishes, but we're using this in a savory way. So literally just take a pinch or two and put it in. And then I'm going to use a good amount of pepper, about a quarter of a teaspoon of pepper and find my salt whenever I happen to lay that and a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. OK. 
Okay, that is looking good. I'm gonna check. Oh goodness. Check my temperatures real quick. Okay, so now we're just gonna simply pour our egg mixture onto the vegetables and the cheese. And if um, not all of it fits, just you know, pour as much okay. as you can in there. See, this is simple, right? It is simple. Yeah, there, perfect. And now if you want, when you're baking this, you can go ahead and put it on like a rimmed cookie sheet so that if any overflows, it doesn't mm -hmm. make a mess in your oven. Mm -hmm. But a 350 degree oven, now this is the part that takes forever. If you're planning this for dinner, plan well ahead because you do have to bake it for about 50 to 60 minutes or until it's nice and set. So um, you wanna be able to shake it and it's not jingling or like if you press on the top, you want it to be nice and firm in the middle. So, okay. but um, that's it. So we don't have an oven, unfortunately, and nobody wants to sit here for 50 to 60 minutes. <laughs> so um, thankfully our catering department has baked this ahead of time so that you can <laughs> um, all sample it today. So we're gonna let that sit there and um, we're gonna get started or I guess put the finishing touches on our cherry pie. So I'm, I'm gonna have you grab the, um, the cookie sheet there. Mm -hmm. So this one you actually don't even need a pie plate for. Really, really simple. So all you need is a cookie sheet. And I should have peeled that top one off. And we're just gonna put that down right on our cookie sheet. You don't even need to grease it because there's already oil in the pie crust. Then we're just gonna take our filling and put that right in the middle of the crust. And again, this is supposed to be rustic. And it actually is a thing. Like if you Google rustic cherry pie, you're gonna get something that looks like this. Or any really? pie, you could do this with any fruit. I didn't make this up. <laughs> there is a recipe. <laughs> So anyways, you just take the edges of your crust then and just kind of fold it up however you think looks pretty. Or not pretty, because that's not important. <laughs> and that's it. And then at home, I like to take some like um, cane sugar or um, like turbinado sugar, like the crystals, and just kind of sprinkle it over the crust a little bit to make it a little sparkle. pretty and <laughs> sparkle. Um, so then this actually cooks really quickly because it's pretty small. So again, um, I think my recipe says 350 degrees and it, about 30 minutes or just until the crust starts to brown a little bit. Um, you just want the crust to be cooked through, but our filling is already cooked. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. all that has to cook is a crust. Pretty so good. And then you're done. And this is like the perfect little pie for a family of... Mm -hmm you know, four or five, mm -hmm. so, or six, mm -hmm. <laughs> depending on how, how much willpower you have, so. <laughs> so, so we have successfully made a quiche mm -hmm. and a rustic cherry pie using healthier ingredients. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, again, like I said, the quiche is great for doubling the recipe. Um, if you want to freeze a quiche, you cook it all the way, and then you cover it with saran wrap, and then a layer of foil after it's completely cooled, and pop it in your freezer mm -hmm. to reheat the quiche. You just take it out of the freezer and immediately put it in your oven. You don't have to like do any thawing or anything. Mm -hmm. You just basically are reheating it in your oven. Mm -hmm. So um, 350 for like 30 or 40 minutes or so until it's cooked on the inside. So. Does anybody in the audience have any questions for either me or Jan today? No questions for me, please. <laughs> no questions. Okay. Well, thank you all so much for coming. It's been a pleasure cooking with you today. And we look forward to seeing you next month for Live It Homegrown. Oh, wow. <laughs> and thank you, Jan. <laughs> Thank you, Dan, for You're being here today. You're welcome. <laughs>